Right at the beginning of the year, Faith, a huge chestnut mare, came to visit us for a few weeks. Hi Faith, welcome. How'd you get? Turn up, step back. Daisy kept her company in the little yard near our outdoor arena and the wonderful kind pony Daisy is, they were best friends right from the start. Faith's owner wanted me to train her to pull things. She had started to prepare Faith already back home, so we didn't start completely from scratch. Faith was used to being handled by people and got taken out for horseback rides regularly. But she was still a rather inexperienced horse and had never pulled any weight yet. This was our goal for the coming weeks. In this video you can follow us through our very first steps of preparatory training. I don't claim this to be the ultimate and only way to prepare a horse to work in harness. But my approach has worked for all three of my own horses and it just makes more sense to me than many of the other training methods I have seen and read about. Faith is a Suffolk punch horse. This breed was developed in the east of England in the early 16th century for heavy farm work. With the introduction of fuel-powered engines into agriculture and transport, numbers declined rapidly from the middle of the last century, making the Suffolk punch a rare breed nowadays. Faith is the first Suffolk punch I met. She is massive in size at nearly 180 centimetres height and 1000 kilos in weight and has an impressively large head but one can't help but like her instantly as she is such a great and friendly character. When I don't know a horse at all yet, I like to see how they move around freely without bridle, saddle or any other gadget. Much can be said about the horse's trust in and respect of humans and their willingness to cooperate and learn when they are free to move and interact as they wish. So on the first day I just let faith move around me. In equine circles, this approach is also called work at liberty because you don't force the horse to do anything as such. You just try to get her on your side and get her to accept your leadership out of her own free will. Horses are herd animals, so the trick here is to get her to want to be part of a mini herd with me, the human. Faith moves quite happily around me but then there is a point where she decides that being on her own is not as much fun as joining up with me. That's the moment when she accepts me as the leader of our team and chooses to follow me around with no lead rope or reins attached. This is a first big positive step in our budding relationship. Then. I want to deepen that bond by asking her to move around a bit more, whilst I decide about direction and speed, including obstacles like these ground poles. No bother for Faith, she actually quite seems to enjoy that I give her something to do. Another exercise for Faith is to follow me very closely whilst I hold her on a lead rope which is attached to her head. She really has to pay attention now to keep the right distance, focus on me and react quickly when I ask her to stop or turn. We keep these sessions short because she is still young and not used to big long training units and would just get frustrated if they turned out to be too tedious or tiring. The thing is to keep it positive and achievable for the horse so that she can learn at her pace and succeed in her efforts to cooperate with me. As a next session I lunge Faith. 
She is asked to move around me in a wide circle whilst being attached to a long rope. This is great for helping Faith to learn to balance herself better. Very important for such a large horse with long legs and a high centre of gravity. She also learns to listen to my voice. I ask her to walk, trot and hold. After that, I want to see how she goes under the saddle. This is a great way to feel how balanced she is and how well she responds to me, asking her to go left or right by using the reins. Just as well you're parked near the ramp. Yeah, still a long way up. One, two, three, up. as if she's always had a ramp in her life. I make it more fun by throwing in some poles on the ground she has to climb over. These poles are supposed to teach Faith more body awareness and controlling her legs more accurately. She'll come across a lot of twigs and logs in her future life as a forestry horse so it's good to start early teaching her to lift her legs when there is something lying in her way. So far so good. Of course, Faith meets my own horses too. Henry especially is smitten by her. Now that I know Faith responds fairly well to my voice commands and rain aids, and I am sure she does not kick and spook easily, we are ready for some long reining. This will be the way she will be worked in her future career as a workhorse, by having two long lines attached to her bridle, with the horse handler walking beside or behind her. So it is essential that she understands all basic commands like walk on, halt and back really well with the person guiding her from behind. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on. Good girl. Once she has something attached to her like a log or plough, it is absolutely vital that she can stand still when stopped or she might hurt herself. So we practice this a lot, as well as walking backwards, which she will have to do when we start hitching her to a log. You are just huge. Huge nostrils, huge eyes, huge everything. Next, I build a little obstacle course with poles and cones and barrels to practice our steering. Faith is so keen in these sessions, she is like a sponge taking it all in, wanting to do it right. And at the same time, she's very cool and relaxed about it all. I put her coolness to a test. We do some desensitizing. Faith might come across all sorts of surprises in her future life and it will keep herself and her handler safe if she learns to stay calm and not overreact. These exercises might look a bit silly but just imagine you have a hundred kilo hefty log attached to her and a plastic bag flies out of the hedge and into her path. You don't really want her to take off in fright or jump backwards onto your toes or stumble over the log in panic. Also, the tug chains will most likely regularly touch her hind legs at work, so it is only fair to get her used to this beforehand. Faith is remarkably calm. This shows that the long line of selective breeding has paid off to produce a horse who is strong, very willing to be put to work, keen to learn, 
gentle and calm by nature and not prone to panic. Faith rather slows down and stops when she encounters something new and is open to figure it out as we go along. As a last exercise, before the real pulling in harness starts, Faith gets to watch one of my horses at work. This is a sound and sight she has never experienced, but she looks on curiously and is not too troubled by it. Well done, Faith. You passed the test. And we will move on to work in harness now. What do you think of that? It's interesting, isn't it? Stay tuned for our next video.